In 34, we've got a system in equilibrium. We're going to increase the temperature and we want to know what would have, which, which, which of one of these products or reactants would have its moles increase when equilibrium is reestablished after increasing the temperature. And so we have essentially in play here Le Chatelier's principle. Le Chatelier's principle. Now, if we're increasing temperature, you can kind of treat heat as the thing that you're increasing. So we're increasing the heat. And so Le Chatelier's principle says whatever you do to the reaction, the reaction at in equilibrium, the reaction is going to respond to that stress by shifting the reaction in such a way that it relieves that thing that you did, that it, re that it reverses what you did. So if we're going to increase the temperature, we're going to increase the heat, the reaction is going to shift to the left to consume that extra heat and thereby produce more of these guys and therefore you're going to have less of the SO3 as part of that process. So increase heat, reaction shifts to the left, we're going to produce more of these guys. So we look at our choices. Uh, which one would have uh, increasing number of moles? Well, it should be SO2 and O2, as we see on the left. So that would be 2 and 3, and that gets us for 34, choice C. Now in 35, we've got this reaction. We're adding calcium oxide to a strong acid, HCl. And we would know what products are formed. So when you mix a, an oxide, a metal oxide, with an acid, you're basically going to create, this is not exactly the net ionic equation, but you're going to create some sort of ionic compound, CaCl2. It's going to be in solution, so technically we probably should more accurately write this as Ca2 plus plus 2Cl minus. And then your O and your H3O, or I guess, yeah, your H3O and your O, you're going to form... Uh, water as the other product. So the oxygen is going to join with the H3O and form this water mixture. So water product. So we look at the choices, we see it's going to be 1 and 2 then, not H2. That is not going to be a product here. And so we would get choice, let's see, choice B. Thirty-six. The SiCl4 molecule is nonpolar, and chlorine is more electronegative than silicon. From this information alone, it can be deduced that. Well, we know that if this molecule was nonpolar, that means the molecule must be symmetrical, because when you have a symmetrical molecule, that means you have a nonpolar molecule. So we know three is true. We know just from I mean experience that SiCl4 is tetrahedral, so it's not going to be planar. So we can get rid of that. And then finally, the silicon chlorine bond is nonpolar. No, we have an electronegativity difference. Si and Cl have got different electronegativities. I mean, we know that from the periodic table, but they also just tell us here. And so we know that since this uh, molecule is, um, uh, since the, these two atoms have different electronegativities, then the bond between them is polar. The molecule is nonpolar, but the bond is polar. That's a very important difference because when you draw, let's say, SiCl4, this bond is is polar, right? Polar, 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 polar bonds. But then if you look at the molecule overall, the molecule overall is symmetrical, and so you get the nonpolar molecule. And so that's why uh, one is going to be false. So the only one that works here is three. And so the answer to this one is 